On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, fellow heads of state and government, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my country, Nigeria, I congratulate you, Mr. President, on your election and Mr. Quateras on his first General Assembly outing as our Secretary General. I assure you both of my country's solidarity and cooperation. You will indeed need the cooperation of all member states as we are meeting during extraordinary troubled and dangerous times. Let me also thank former Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, for his service to the United Nations and wish him peaceful retirement. Mr. President, the previous year has witnessed many far-reaching developments. Some of the most significant events include the Iran nuclear deal, the Paris Climate Change Agreement, and of grave concern, the North Korean nuclear crisis. Mr. President, I must also commend the United Nations role in helping to settle thousands of innocent civilians caught in the conflicts in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. In particular, we must collectively thank the government of the Federal Republic of Germany under the commendable leadership of Chancellor Angela Merkel and the governments of Italy, Greece, and Turkey for assisting hundreds of thousands of refugees. In an exemplary show of solidarity, the international community came together within my own region to assist the countries and communities in the Sahel and the Lake Chad regions to contain the threats posed by Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram. We thank the Security Council for visiting the countries of Lake Chad Basin to assess the security situation and the humanitarian needs and for pledging assistance to rebuild lives and livelihoods. Indeed, in Nigeria, we are providing relief and humanitarian assistance to millions in internally displaced camps and those afflicted by terrorism, drought, floods, and other natural disasters. In the last year, the international community came together to focus on the need for gender equality, youth empowerment, social inclusion, and the promotion of education, creativity, and innovation. The frontiers of good governance, democracy, including, hold free, including holding free and fair elections, and the enthronement of the rule of law are expanding everywhere, especially in Africa. Our faith in democracy remains firm and unshaken. Our original organization, ECOS, came together to uphold democracy principles in the Gambia as we had done previously in Côte d'Ivoire.
through our individual national efforts, state institutions are being strengthened to promote accountability and to combat corruption and asset recovery. These can only be achieved through the international community cooperating and providing critical assistance and material support. We shall also cooperate in addressing the growing transnational crimes such as forced labor, modern day slavery, human trafficking, and cyber crime. Mr. President, these cooperative efforts should be sustained. We must collectively devise strategies and mobilize the required responses to stop fleeing ISS, ISIS fighters from mut mutating and infiltrating into the Sahel and the Lake Chad Basin, where there are insufficient resources and the response capacity is weak. This will require strong United Nations cooperation with regional organizations, such as the African Union in conflict prevention and management. The United Nations should continue to take primary leadership of the maintenance of international peace and security by providing in a predictable and sustainable manner adequate funding and other enablers to regional initiatives and peacekeeping operations authorized by the Security Council. Mr. President, new conflicts should not make us lose focus on ongoing unresolved old conflicts. For example, several United Nations Security Council resolutions from 1967 on the Middle East crisis remain unimplemented. Meanwhile, the suffering of the Palestinian people and the blockade of Gaza continue. Additionally, we are now confronted by the desperate human rights and humanitarian situation in Yemen and most tragically in the Rakhine state of Yemen. The Yama crisis is very reminiscent of what happened in Bosnia in 1995 and in Rwanda in 1994. The international community cannot remain silent and do not condemn the horrendous suffering caused by what, from all indications, is a state-backed program of brutal depopulation of the Rohingya inhabited areas in Yama on the basis of ethnicity and religion. We fully endorse the call by the Secretary General on the government of the mayor to order or hold to the ongoing ethnic cleansing and ensure the safe return of the displaced Rohingya to their homes in safety and dignity. In all these crises, the primary victims are the people, the most vulnerable being women and children. That is why the theme of this session, focusing on people, striving for peace and decent life for all on a sustainable planet, is most opposite. While the international community grapples to resolve these conflicts, we must be mindful and focus on the widening inequalities within societies and the gap between the rich and the poor nations. These inequalities and gaps are part of the underlying roots of competition for resources, frustration and anger leading to sparring instability. The most pressing threat to international peace and security today is the accelerated nuclear weapons development program 
by North Korea. Since the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, we have never come so close to the threat of nuclear war as we have now. Mr. President, Nigeria proposes a strong United Nations delegation to urgently engage the North Korea leader. The delegation led by the Security Council should include members from all the regions. The crisis in the Korean Peninsula underscores the urgency for all member states, guided by the spirit of enthroning a safer and more peaceful world to ratify without delay the treaty prohibiting nuclear weapons, which will be open for signature here tomorrow. Mr. President, I end my remarks by reiterating Nigeria's abiding commitment to the, fun, to the fun, foundational principles and goals of the United Nations. Since our admission as a member state in 1960, we have always participated in all efforts to bring about global peace, security, and development. Nigeria will continue to support the United Nations in all its efforts, including the attainment of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the Head of State.